He arrive. He's scheduled to arrive at three o'clock, but it may take longer. Is there another way into the museum? Not a legal one. Okay, thanks for your help. If you can call it that. A pleasure. If you can call it that. I hate puddles. Are you Mr. McClough's assistant? Who wants to know? My name is Nicole Collard. Oh, right. The journalist. We should hurry or we'll be late. Okay. This is Mr. McClough's estate. I think you can find your own way from here. I have to leave you here. My group of children are waiting. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye and uh, good luck with your interview. I take a look at my watch and I notice that I'm five minutes late. What am I to do? No, I must find George first. Nico, down here! George? Live and in color. Each time we get separated, I find you behind bars. I guess it's just bad luck. What happens this time? I'll tell you later. First, meet an old acquaintance. Mademoiselle Kalan. Good to see you again. You evil, deceitful idiot. I thought you were dead. Nico, calm down and get us out of here first. Us? You don't expect me to get this murder out of here, do you? Yes, I do. Come on, I'll explain everything later. Georges would know what to do with it. I might need it later. I don't think that's a good idea. When I was young, I used to watch Western movies with my father. The crooks usually get out of jail by using a horse and a lasso to pull the bars out of the wall. Maybe it works in real life too. The hose is too loose. This could work. Let's get out of here. I think they're coming. Very well, Tom. How were you able to survive the attack? Out with it. You know, my father was a very popular illusionist. Night after night, he'd fill concert tents. The audience loved him. Shortly before he died, he taught me his most important tricks. I learned to disguise and to hoodwink other people, trick them. And it obviously worked. And why did you do that? Instead of pretending to be dead, you could have helped us back in Bannockburn. You might have been extremely helpful. You made it without me. We did, but mainly thanks to a huge pile of luck and an equally huge pile of plastic explosives. And because of that idiot Guido, he really tried to blow out the fire with his mouth. I wouldn't have been too helpful anyway. Why not? I lied to you in the train. We weren't on the same side all along. I was a professional killer, a mercenary who risked his life for money. I don't understand. I knew the Templars before the incidents in Paris, 
Bannockburn or Syria. But not because I used to pay much attention in history class. I was simply hired by them. You worked for the Templars? That's exactly what I'm saying. One hundred thousand dollars were a good reason to start working for the Neo Templars. My first job was killing a politician in Japan. Then I came to Paris. That was the Plantard job. And why the hell did you try to kill Georges? Yes, why did you try to kill him? He was just an unpleasant witness, that's all. However, I did become curious myself at some stage, so I started making inquiries. I read everything about the Templars I could get hold of, everything about their past. Old newspapers, articles, medieval documents, journals, simply everything. Naturally, the Templars didn't like that, so I was put on their blacklist myself. And that's what caused me to act against them. A hitman seized with remorse. I don't believe it. As stupid as it might sound, but even killers have a soul, Monsieur Stobart. I decided to take your side and help you. But you didn't. You still tried to kill me. Wrong. I was never intending to kill you. Didn't you? Have you forgotten our little meeting in Syria? I haven't. That was an I don't know how many feet jump I had to do. As I said, I'm quite good at pretending my gun was loaded with blank ammunition. Um, uh, what? You're telling me I risked my life jumping down there because you threatened me with blank ammunition? It must have been an incredible experience. You said you wouldn't have been able to help us. Why? Very simple. I broke my leg when I fell off the train. What did you do in Jimmy McClough's house? That's a little complicated to explain. Only this much. The Templars still exist. There is a silver dog tag lying on the floor. There's a name engraved. Dog. <laughs> How inventive. Those are the solid looking windows of this underground coach. I push the window pane, but nothing happens. A girl. She looks worried. Hi, my name is George. What's yours? My name's Miranda. How old are you, Miranda? I'm 12. Why are you sad? My dog's run away. Don't you want to look for it? I can't. Why not? 
I'm blind. Max is my guide dog. I see. Shall I find him for you? Would you do that, mister? Sure, Miranda. I'd love to. Maybe you can also find my dog whistle. Max must have somehow torn it from me when he ran away. I shouldn't talk to them now. This young man seems to be in his senses despite the crash. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm not deaf. What can I do for you? Do you have any idea why this train derailed? No, I haven't. Could it be an attack? What's that supposed to achieve? Injured or maybe even dead people? Hmm, I don't know. I understand. Have you seen two persons leaving the train? A Latin guy and a tall woman with black hair? If I'd seen them leave the train, I wouldn't be here, don't you think? Okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. I suffered some minor bruises. But if I look around here, I see that I'm one of the luckier ones. Pleased to hear that. Okay, I'll be leaving then. Bye! A middle-aged man. He's unconscious. I am not a thief. That must be Miranda's dog. Hmm, he's snuffling at the bench. Strange. Oh my god, that looks like a bomb. The clock gives me 30 minutes to get rid of it. It's fastened too securely. I can't remove it. No. I used the pointed side of the dog tag to cut the bomb free from the duct tape that held it to the bench. Even if the thought of a ticking time bomb in my pocket is anything but calming, I must take it. Somebody might trigger the ignition. I take a closer look at the dog, and I see that he really ripped the whistle from Miranda. Carefully, I take it from him. Hmm. I shouldn't touch anything. That's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> 